Welcome to Healthy Bites. My name is Karen White and I am a registered dietitian living in the town of Westboro who's trying to help all of us out there eat better one bite at a time. As you may know if you are fans of the show, every semester Westboro TV takes a field trip and comes to my course that I teach at Framingham State University and I have the pleasure of having my students put on a show for you. So my students are ready to be dietitians in a few months so they have put this show together and they have great ideas for you for especially with this summer coming up you have a couple of great awesome uh, side dishes for salads, you have a couple of great breakfast ideas, a refreshing drink, and believe me, um, we've tried these recipes and they are awesome. So with no further ado, I'm going to, we're going to put this show together and I hope you enjoy it and I have to give a shout out to my number one fan <laughs> in Westboro, Connor McGrath, this is for you. <laughs> All right, thank you, enjoy the show. Hi everyone, my name is Becca, this is Nicole, and we're nutrition students from Framingham State University. And today we're going to teach you how to make pomegranate feta avocado toast, which is great for a breakfast, lunch, or a snack, um, and it's high in antioxidants, fiber, and healthy fats. Thanks Becca. So here, before we started, we made sure to wash our hands, clean the table so there's no cross-contamination, and um, so we have a clean surface to work on. So first we have uh, multi-grain bread here and multigrain bread is higher in fiber than white bread and fiber is great for regulating, strengthening, improving your digestive system and we're gonna put these in the toaster and keep an eye on them while we're prepping the rest of the ingredients. Okay, so when you go to the store and you're trying to pick out an avocado you want to think about first when you're going to use it. If you're going to use your avocado later today, you want it pretty ripe. But if you're going to use it four or five days from now, you want it to be uh, not so ripe because if it sits on your counter for four or five days, it's going to be brown by the time you get to it. So the best test of the ripeness of an avocado is to just pick it up and squeeze it. So this one, when I give it a little bit of pressure, it indents, so I know it's pretty ripe. If I were to give it a little bit of pressure and it felt hard as a rock, then in four or five days, I'd say it's probably ready for you. So this one's perfect. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you guys a safe and mess-free way to cut an avocado, because it can be a little bit tricky sometimes. So starting from the stem at the top, we're gonna cut all the way around, meeting back at the top again. Okay, so, and if you give one half a little twist, that should separate easily, just like that. And now we're gonna take the pit out, which is the tricky part. So we're gonna take this clean dish towel and we're gonna keep it in our non-dominant hand to um, keep it secure, this side of the avocado. So we're gonna place that there and we're gonna use the chef's knife and we're gonna quickly pierce the center of the avocado seed to um, get it onto the knife to remove it. So, and then holding it tightly with your hand, give the knife a little twist and it should separate easily, just like that. So putting that down, safely removing the pit, and throwing it away after. So it looks like the toast is probably almost done at this point. So then we're gonna take a spoon, and we're gonna scoop the um, avocado half, and one half will go on one slice of toast, and the other half will go on the other slice. And now with a fork, we're going to uh, mash the avocado till it's almost smooth in consistency on the toast. So avocado is a great source of healthy fat, and um, including healthy fats like avocado into your diet can um, help keep you fuller longer. Okay. And... Now it'll be time for the toppings. All right. So the first topping we have is pomegranates. You can buy pomegranates in the store um, whole like this, 
or you can buy them in little cups already separated. We aren't going to show you how to separate the seeds from the avocado today because it's a little bit tricky, time consuming, messy, that could be a whole nother episode. So today we just use the ones that were already in this little cup. Um, the recipe calls for half a cup of pomegranate seeds, so this is what we have here. And we're just going to evenly distribute it between the two slices of toast. And pomegranate seeds are high in antioxidants, which support your immune system and protect your body. You can think of them as little superheroes flying around your body, um, protecting all of your cells from stress and inflammation. They're really just out here doing the most for us, so we love them. And then the next topping is feta cheese. And it also calls for half a cup of feta that we can evenly distribute between both slices of toast. Uh, this recipe probably could, you could probably substitute this feta cheese for goat cheese and it would be just as good. And if you wanted to make it vegan, you could just leave the cheese out entirely. This looks like enough cheese, actually. Um, and then lastly, we have lemon. So you take a lemon wedge and squeeze it over your toast. Use as much or as little as you'd like. It's up to you. And that is it. Looks great. Thank you, Becca. So thank you for watching Westboro TV. Today we showed you how to make pomegranate feta avocado toast, which is high in fiber, antioxidants, and healthy fats. We hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Hi everyone, I'm Sam. I'm Laura. And today we'll be making a strawberry chia Greek yogurt bowl. Uh, this is a really great recipe for our breakfast, but you could also do it as a snack or like a dessert or something. Right, so what we're going to get started with is our strawberries first. So we've already taken some. Um, the recipe calls for a whole cup, so you, you would fill up your whole cup with the strawberries. Um, we've taken half and chopped them up small and then mashed them with a fork. Um, what I'm going to do next is take some strawberries. I've already washed my hands as well as the strawberries, and I'm going to put those on the cutting board and use a paring knife because we don't need um, a large chef's knife for this because we're doing fine work. Um, and we're going to um, hold a paring knife in my right hand because I'm a righty and take our, our fingers and hold the strawberry and then roll our fingers forward so we can do the claw method. So we rest that paring knife right against our, our knuckle and then we can get nice slices. And we put that on the flat edge and then we're gonna create nice slices because these are gonna go on top of our yogurt bowl that up. Okay, and so we're going to be using Greek yogurt today. Uh, we're using this because it's higher in protein than regular yogurt, and we're also using a plain variety instead of a flavored one so we can control the sweetness. All right, so we can mix that yogurt right on into that. Okay. And this is three quarters of a cup, but it's also six ounces, so if you get one one whole little cup it's the whole thing or if you get a bigger container it's three quarters of a cup so once we have that all um, incorporated into the strawberries we'll then add in our chia seeds um, these are really great in that and this is actually also um, one tablespoon and these are great in that they're full of fiber um, omega-3 fatty acids which are really great for um, heart health as well as health in general, as well as some protein. So we're gonna add that right in. And then we're gonna also add some vanilla extract. And this adds some flavor without adding sweetness. And you could also add your favorite um, sweetener if you wanted this recipe a little bit sweeter. Um, so you could add some honey, some maple syrup, or even if, some artificial sweetener if you didn't wanna add any um, actual sugar into the recipe. So once we have that all mixed together, what are we going to do from there? Uh, we're going to top it with the rest of our strawberries. So those, lay them nice 
You can make this a little bit prettier by placing it into a newer, cleaner bowl and, you know, plating it up all nice, or you can kind of add it all in there. And last, we're gonna add a tablespoon of sliced almonds, which will add a nice crunch, and also some monounsaturated fat, which will help protect against heart disease. So there you have your beautiful um, strawberry chia Greek yogurt bowl. So thank you so much for um, joining us today, and I hope you get some inspiration from this recipe. My name is Sarah and this is Abigail and today we're going to show you how to make a refreshing drink. We all know summer is around the corner and it gets pretty hot. Therefore we would like to share with you a frozen pineapple lemonade drink that is loved by kids and adults and, and it also contains essential nutrients. So this recipe is really easy. It only uses three ingredients. We have one pineapple, two lemons, and one cup of ice. You're also going to need a blender to blend all your ingredients together. For some reason, if you don't have a blender or your blender doesn't work, just cut up your pineapple into pieces and munch on them and you still get the essential nutrients. So our first step is to cut up the pineapple. We already have most of the pineapple cut up here for you, but as I finish, I want to show you that we're cutting them into small pieces. They don't have to be perfect because we're going to end up blending them up anyways. And pineapples are a great source of fiber and also vitamin C. So fiber is gonna help keep us fuller longer and prevent us from overeating. And vitamin C is good for our immune systems and will help us fight colds and infections. So once we're done cutting up our pineapples, we can add them to the blender. So the next step will be to juice our lemons and put them in the blender. And what I like to do is to roll the lemon a little bit to make it softer for me when I cut them. So I'm gonna slice them crosswise and put the cut up face into the squeezer to make it easier for the juice to flow through. And this is gonna require a little bit of muscle work, but we're gonna try to do it. So you want to squeeze as hard as you can to get all the juice out. And I'm going to do the same for the next one. Remember, try to squeeze as hard as you can. And when you get, uh, when you juice the lemons as hard as you can and get as much juice out of it as possible, it'll increase the vitamin C content. Yes. That's the last one. Make sure to use up all your lemons. Our last step is to add one cup of ice to the blender. And then we can blend it. We also like this recipe because it can be used in other combinations such as fruit popsicles. And all you have to do is to put the already made blend pineapple drink into fruit popsicle molds, put popsicle sticks into them and freeze them and your kids will enjoy them for snacks. We like this recipe more than other fruit drinks on the market because typically the other fruit drinks have added sugars in them or artificial flavors. But our recipe uses fresh fruit so it's a great way for you and your family to increase your fruit in your diet. We hope you enjoy this refreshing drinks. Cheers. Cheers. Hello everyone, my name is Emily and I'm Tori and today we're going to show you two variations on how to make overnight oats. 
So this recipe is a really nice recipe because it's very adaptable. Mm -hmm. So you can change the ingredients based on if you have different taste preferences, if you have allergies or mm -hmm. intolerances. It's the same base of a recipe, but you can definitely make it your own. Yep. So Emily, how are we going to get started? So our first ingredient is in the title. We are going to be using old fashioned oats. Okay. What other kind of oats could we use? So really you can use whatever oats you have on hand, whether it's like um, a quick cooking oat mm -hmm. or steel cut oats. Yep. We're using old fashioned, but whatever you have on hand will probably be fine. Yep, so we're going to add a half cup okay. of oats. If you spill some on the table, that's fine. It's okay. All right, what's our next ingredient? So the next thing we're going to add is the liquid. So I'm going to use just 1% milk in mine, but you're going to use something different, right? Yes, so I'm lactose intolerant. I'm going to use a milk alternative. Okay. And I have almond milk. Okay, Could you? do you have to use almond milk? No, you can use any milk alternative. There's soy milk, coconut milk, things like that. But if you have a nut allergy, you could also use something like rice milk. Okay. okay. So why so do we want to use 1% milk? So we're going to use 1% milk. You could also use fat-free milk. Um, whatever you have on hand will be fine, but using 1% or fat-free will make sure that you don't have as much saturated fat because dairy is a source of saturated fat and we don't need as much of that in our diet. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to use 1% today. Yep. So what next? So next we're going to do our flavoring because oats are kind of bland, right? So we Sometimes. want the oats to kind of soak in all the flavors overnight. And for that, we're going to use cinnamon. So we're going to use a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Yes, it's customary to smell every ingredient. It smells good. <laughs> and then we're going to use a half a teaspoon of vanilla. Okay. What if I don't really like cinnamon or vanilla? Well, you could either add less or you could add a different spice if you wanted to. Okay. So sometimes I'll just use less then. Yeah, you could use us okay. if you want. So we're going to give it a little stir, and then we're going to add a little pinch of salt. Okay. And I don't have to put salt in it, right? Well, does it make it salty? No. So it's not going to make it salty, but I like to put in just a little pinch of salt just, just because it. it gives it a little added sweetness to the flavors that are already in it. So just a little pinch will go a long way, but you don't have to if you have you know, a dietary or a medical condition that you want to limit salt in your diet. You don't have to add it. But. Mm -hmm. Just so it out looks the very liquidy right now, but it is gonna like soak in overnight, and it's gonna be kind of a porridgey consistency in the morning. Okay. So what's our next ingredient? So next we're gonna add the fruit. So I'm gonna use frozen peaches in mine, but you're gonna use something else, right? Yes, I'm gonna use mixed berries: blueberries, strawberries, blackberries. Okay. Um, so we're both using frozen today, but you can also use fresh depending on what's available and mm -hmm. in your grocery store. Um, but if you want to use frozen. These are nice because even in the winter time, you can still get some fresh fruit and yep. they are a little bit less expensive too and still give you all the same vitamins, minerals, fiber, all those yep. nutrients. Yep, they still have the same nutrients even though they're frozen. Okay. All right, so our last ingredient for the overnight oats is gonna be some nuts. Um, neither of us have nut allergies, so I'm gonna use some sliced almonds. What are you gonna use? I'm gonna use chopped walnuts. What could we use instead if someone doesn't like nuts or something? So if you don't like nuts or if you had a nut allergy, seeds are also a great um, alternative for this. So you could use something like chia seeds, flax seeds, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds. Pumpkin seeds, yeah. Um, they all have a great source of omega-3 fatty mm -hmm. acids. So those are those unsaturated fats that we want to strive to get a little bit more of in our diet. Yep. So why do we add those in? Why do we care about that? So unsaturated fats help reduce inflammation so they can be anti-inflammatory. And then much like the fiber like in the oats, fiber in the oats, fiber in the nuts, it'll help you keep you fuller longer throughout the day, help you be more satisfied. Sounds good to me. Yes, so okay. this is the finished overnight oats. Mm -hmm. We did it in these pretty glasses for this show, but if you want to use like an old peanut butter jar, something with a cover to put it in the fridge for how long should we leave it in the fridge? So you're going to want to leave it in the fridge for, I say around six hours, but overnight, just like the name implies, you can certainly do it, like make it after dinner, take mm -hmm. it out in the morning, put it right in your lunchbox or wherever you're going. Yep. Um, having a cover on it makes it really easy to just grab out of the yep. fridge and go. Yep, as long as all the liquid really soaks in, mm -hmm. you can play around with the texture and how you like it. And you can always add some of the nuts on top in the morning to give it more of a crunch, something like that. Okay, cool. Yep. So today, now we've made our overnight oats. We hope you enjoy them. We hope you're able to make them your own. And thank you for watching. So another tip to make this great is to do it with kids because it can really get them involved in making a you know, a recipe, but it's great because it doesn't involve any knife skills or anything and they can just measure it, put it in bowls, and then pour it into the cup and stir it around. And as long as it has a tight fitting lid, they can shake it like crazy and you don't have to worry about any messes, any cleanup, any things falling on the floor. It'll be perfectly fine for them.
you for watching our show today. We hope you enjoyed it and gave you lots of new ideas for the upcoming uh, seasons with spring and summer. And as we end every show when we visit Framingham State University, may, may most fights not help you,